Before I get to the Taco Casa hotline, we're very fortunate to have Coach Dana Duckworth. Uh, they got to meet tomorrow night against the Georgia Bulldogs, seven fifteen senior night, Big Al's birthday. Good morning, Dana. How are you? Good morning, Dana. Good morning. Good morning, Barry. Good morning, Wimp. What a sunny day, finally. It is sunny. Now, Dana, I got a job for you. You're probably the only one that can handle this. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. I want you to help Dad take over take over Dad's Twitter, whatever he wants to tweet something. Like, he needs a lot of help. And you're, you're probably the one that has I did enough. A good job with, I did a good job. Yesterday. You have Twitter. enough confidence to correct him and straighten him out. What did he I do gets, wrong? He gets real frustrated when you try to tell him things. So why don't you be the one in charge of helping him with his Twitter? Well, I appreciate both of you, but I honestly have my hands full already with what we have going on. So I think he's doing a great job. Just remember, Wimp, life is a full-time interview, so everything matters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. All right. So she, yeah. you, you declined the job. That was the best decision you made all day, Dana. I'll just let well, you know well, that. Well, thank you. Uh, I think I you. did that well, well, it just... Anyway, we'll talk about it later. All right, Dana, tell us about this uh, Saturday. I can't believe we're already at the last uh, uh, home meet time. I mean, the schedule flies uh, in gymnastics. Tell us about this weekend. It does fly by. So it has been an incredible week for Alabama gymnastics and for NCAA gymnastics. So first of all, I have to congratulate yesterday, Ashley Miles, one of our most decorated athletes, multi-time national champion. She was named the SEC great at the women's uh, – championship yesterday sure. and that was huge for alabama gymnastics sure. and then this committee i'm on for growing college gymnastics launched long island university so another division one program being added to our beautiful sport and then of course we have the georgia bulldogs coming to town for our final home meet and for me senior night you know as coaches i mean it just goes by so fast your student athletes come in as babies you know just like just I call them caterpillars, right? And then their time at Alabama goes so fast. And then you're trying to create this beautiful butterfly that goes out into the world. You know, this senior class of Shea Mahoney from Chicago, Winter Childers from Spearfish, South Dakota, and Maddie Desch from Lenexa, Kansas, have been special young ladies. And this meet is important. So when you look at the rankings and where we are, you know, you're trying to get into the SEC championship, highest ranking that you can. And statistically, we know we can't get ahead of Florida and possibly LSU, but Georgia and Alabama are right there. So this meet is a huge rivalry in, one, maintaining that third spot going to the SEC championship, two, just a great performance, and three, for our local fans and, you know, the community surrounding us, this is your shot, you know? And so it's Saturday meet, which is so different because it's been Friday, Friday. Now it's Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. And it's Big Al's birthday bash. And we're going to celebrate those seniors. So it's going to be a great competition. We're really fun to watch this year, you guys. It's been a great season, and uh, we just got to stay healthy and keep pushing. How many seniors we got, Dana? Talk about the seniors. Three seniors. So Shay Mahoney is actually in her graduate degree right now and getting uh, her master's while she is finishing up her fourth year at Alabama in sports administration communications degree. She's doing three events. She's doing the best gymnastics of her career right now. Maddie Desch from Alnexa, Kansas. She'll be graduating in May and going on to physician's assistant school. And she has been a dynamite on vault and floor. And then Winter Childers has been limited to bars this year. But she is one of the most creative-minded entrepreneurs you've ever seen. So not only are they champions, you know, on the arena floor and have been huge leaders for this team, they have excelled in the classroom and are going to go on to life and be extremely successful. Sure. That. That's uh, what we do at what, Alabama. <laughs> that's right. What uh, What does recruiting look like for this year? So we have three coming in right now in 20, and uh, it's going to be a great group of young women. We've got some power coming in from Ohio. We've got some uh, elegance coming in from uh, Delaware, and we've got uh, a young lady coming in with some great power from New Orleans. And so that'll be in the fall that those young women will, will arrive. And some of them haven't been announced yet, so I can't share their names. But uh, I'm exciting cause, excited. And this freshman class we have right now are making huge impacts. So Makari Doggett is a huge leader in the freshman class, along with Melissa Blanco and Ella Burgess. And so it's nice to have bookends as far as three great seniors 
and three amazing freshmen that are contributing almost half of all of your routines this year. Dana, tell us a, a typical day for, for one of your gymnasts here. Obviously, they got school and class, and the training that they have to do uh, is amazing. Just just t- walk us through uh, a typical day for, for one of your gymnasts. Absolutely. So normally, all of their classes take place from 8 to 12, and then they go straight to the training room. They grab a quick bite to eat. They get into their lineup at 1 o'clock. We train from 1 to 5, and then they go to dining hall, They go to study hall, and a lot of them are having tutors at 9 o'clock at night. They go home, they rest, and they rinse and repeat. So it's pretty pretty intense. Now, there's days we'll have a two-hour practice, depending on what we're doing, but uh, it varies. We do a lot of what we call corrective work, rehab work, because gymnastics has so many moving parts. And keeping healthy is, of course, the key to any athlete, but especially in gymnastics, just because it's such a demanding sport on the body. And our ladies spend as much time in the training room. And I, I don't know if you remember this, Lynn, but I will always remember being in the training room. Your back was sore. My back was sore. We were sitting next to each other on the table. Getting, oh, getting Lord. <laughs> yep, that's true. <laughs> I remember that. I remember you being on this one machine one time, and it was selling, like, electric pulses in your body. And you look over, and you just said, I don't know what this thing's doing, but I hope it's helping. <laughs> <laughs> was he moaning and groaning in there, Dana? No. No, Dana, Dana, yeah, come on. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sang. I guess Sang was in there having to work on him. Poor Sang. Oh, God bless him. Wonderful Sang. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Good tell time. me how hard it is, uh, or is it easy to get the the good players in the country that you want to go after to try to recruit. I mean, naturally, you got to recruit to your needs, and you got to recruit the best ability that you can. Is there a formula for it? everybody knowing who the best players are and so everybody knows about them in advance. It's not maybe not like basketball where you discover one. It's it's pretty much stuck out there. Is that correct? You know, when it's very, very competitive because yeah. we don't have a high number count as far as the best athletes in the country to recruit from. Yeah. So when you look at your top 20 programs, we're all recruiting the same bundle yeah, of athletes that's, that's unless point. you do find that special athlete, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I, I look, look at your roster, right. what you got, uh, what, a couple Alabama kids. So you got to go nationwide recruiting, right, Dana? Oh, yes. We're not only nationwide, but we go international. I mean, we are, you know, in conversation with athletes from Canada, France, Great Britain, Australia. I mean, it's hard to get those athletes to campus many times because it's so costly but with the opportunity honestly of the internet y'all you can see anybody and um, it really helps i mean we will facetime with athletes we have opportunity to do you know video teleconferencing so not only are you just talking on the telephone but you get to see someone's face and personality in trying to build the relationship because as you know in recruiting you're recruiting the person Yes, you're recruiting talent because there's a certain talent level that has to be a given to, you know, be a part of a program that's competing for a national championship. But in our program, yeah, I don't, I don't know that you. Well, you know, I guess this is a question. You don't recruit kids or ladies who you say to yourself, "I think she's going to get better." You recruit those that are already there. Is that is that? Uh, do you do you recruit ladies that you think they're going to get better, or do you not fool with them? Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes wimp, those are the best athletes Okay. because they have so much left in the tank. Okay. They aren't burned out and they want, they, they're there to prove something. And so okay. like we have Lexi Graber, one of our top all arounders, basically the only athlete we have on our team right now that's an all arounder. She was never an elite athlete. She was an awesome. Well, that's, I take that back as a junior, as a little, as a little kid, she was an elite athlete. She stayed in the J.O. program, and she was a comp- competitor and a fighter. And what I love about Lexi Graver, when you watch her, every day is a new day. And she's not competing against her teammates. She's not competing against the competition. She is a competitor against herself. She trains that way. She competes that way. And she's hard on herself. And that's the kind of student athlete you want to recruit. Because, you know, you hear Nate talk about max effort. You hear, you know, Murph talk about Mudita and someone that's unself, that's just unselfish. And gives, like those, that's the kind of student athlete you want to recruit. And many a time, those are the ones that haven't arrived. 
Dana, answer this. Uh, do you guys in gymnastics, I know basketball, obviously you have to scout your opponent, football your opponent. Uh, I know gymnastics, you guys have your routines. You go from one uh, event to the next. Do you have to scout Georgia? Like, hey, these girls, this is what they're going to do, so we have to make this exercise a little more difficult so we can score higher. Is there any scouting in done in gymnastics? No, in, in gymnastics, there really isn't a defense. The only defense I could ever tell you that there is, is like you may have a athlete that has more skills in their routine that they necessarily need to be able to have a 10-0 start value, right? Yeah. So there may be a time, and Nikki Guerrero is a great example of that who graduated a couple of years ago. She had a beam routine that I call it the tinted thing. So she had every skill you could imagine, and she didn't need to do it all. If we were in a tight meet, I would say do the break glass routine, which meant don't do all the skills. We had a secondary routine she would do that was basically simple for her. And then if we were rocking and there was no risk, I'd say, all right, do the kitchen sink routine. And she knew what that meant, and she had the mindset to be able to go back or forth, back wow. and forth, yeah. to be able to do that. She had a really incredible mental toughness when it came to that event. And so for the most part, the girls will work the routines they have every day, and that's what we that's what we do. All right, uh, before we let you go, tell them how to get the tickets, what time yes. uh, the meet is, which is 7.15, when do you, you need them in the seats? Uh, I have a feeling whatever you ask for, you can get. So tell everybody what, what they need to do. <laughs> well, first of all, remember, it is Saturday night. There are plenty of tickets left at the box office, but you can also go on to RollTide.com or go up to the box office today and get those tickets. You can also walk up. I want to encourage, of course, all of our students because students are free and we always have great t-shirts and giveaways. The lights will go down at 7.15. I always recommend people use the parking deck, park at the soccer lot, take the bus over and try to be there a good 30 minutes prior just so you don't have any kind of rushing because the intro is one of the best parts of that performance in the meet. And uh, get in your seats early and just sit back and be excited about watching some of the best gymnastics in the country. It's going to be very competitive. Remember, it's a big rivalry. And remember to celebrate those seniors. And uh, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. And then, of course, next week we'll be up in Birmingham for a meet up on Elevate the Stage. And then SECs are in Duluth. So lots of more gymnastics we can talk in the future, you guys. But for this Saturday, be in your seats at 715, buy your tickets. And let's celebrate the last home meet of Alabama gymnastics. All right, I'll talk to you after the season about taking over Dad's Twitter. You're too busy right now, so I'll make maybe in the run. summer. All right, thanks, Dana. Thanks, All right, Dana. Thank you. you guys. Roll Tide.